out salute to the people. It's the social forecast. It is Wednesday, J- July 31st, about 10.35 p.m. I hope you all did something today to further your goals and to help you realize your dreams. So I'm on my way into job number two, my overnight job. And um, I came across a post earlier that I kind of want to talk to you about a little bit. And this one pertains to everybody, but especially, you know, in the context that I'm going to be using it, especially my fellow men. Um, So the post I came across said something to the effect of, you know, don't be afraid to cut off. Don't be afraid to cut people out of your life. It was one of those, you know, you don't have to keep toxic people around you. You don't have to keep unnecessary people around you. You know, if somebody's bringing you down, if somebody's not adding to your life or, you know, bringing equal value to the table of the situation or relationship or friendship or whatever it is, you know, don't be afraid to part ways with that person and cut them off. Generally speaking, that's a true statement. Um, I would agree with that all day. There's only one situation I would not agree with that. Um, when it comes to, and I'm going to be very clear here, when it comes to the family and the family unit that you created, not the one that you were born into, the family unit you created, I think that's the only situation in which you are always even if only to a certain extent, obligated and tied to that individual or those individuals. If you have a child with someone, um, and you know both parents are involved in that child's life, then those two parents owe it not to themselves, not to each other, but to that child, that mutual child. If they're both in that child's life, those parents owe it to each other to make sure that there is some kind of mutual connection that exists there so that that child can have the best of both worlds, you know, when dealing with those parents. Because when you create a family even if the person you created that family with might not have been your number one choice, it might not have been planned, it might not have panned out the way you wanted it to, you still have a life that now you are responsible for, at least 50% responsible for how that child turns out. Now, outside of that situation, outside of being tethered to the family you created and being obligated to the family you created, any and everybody else, in my opinion, is fair game. A family you're born into sometimes are less family than friends that you grew up with or meet at school or work and, you know, create a bond and a connection with that lasts 10, 15, 20, sometimes 30 plus years. So the family you're born into, in my opinion, is not an automatic connection that lasts for a lifetime or that necessarily should. You can't help the family you're born into. The family you're born into, you didn't choose. You have to deal with that family for a certain uh, time period in your life. Once you reach a period where you're an adult, you're out on your own and you're creating your own family or creating your own path and living your own life, you no longer have to necessarily have a connection with that, with that family. I mean, obviously, it's great if you do. Most people will find it ideal for that to be the case. But I just don't agree with the people that say, you know, blood is thicker than water. And, you know, your family is the number one people who you should always have in your life who will always be there for you. Because that's not necessarily true. You know, the same way you have to create a bond with people you meet out in the street, out in the world. is the same way you have to create a bond the people associated with the family you were born into. I don't care if it's siblings, cousins, aunts, uncles, mother, father. These people are still strangers to you. 
when you are when you come into the world. The only reason why these people have somewhat of a advantage over any other stranger out in the world is because these people are usually in more close proximity to you throughout the majority of your life during those early stages. But some of the most shady people could be family members. I mean, we all, I think, on some level, we all understand that. Now, more specifically, when I say I want to speak to the fathers about this, you know, second half of what I'm, what I want to talk to you about is because mothers so much don't have to deal with this. Fathers do. When you deal with a woman and that woman gets pregnant, has your child, things don't go right between you and that woman, no matter who it is that does something to screw up that relationship. And I really want my, my, you know, my fellow men to really pay attention and listen to this because it's less of a headache there for you in the long run than what you might realize or be willing to accept. There's a lot of advances in the legal system. There's a lot of progression in the way of recognition for fathers as parents. But the court system overall still treats fathers as auxiliary parents. And the court system still, to the detriment of so many good fathers out there, and I've talked about this on this platform, is probably one of the leading topics I cover on this platform. Um, the court system still sees fathers too much of the time as just a paycheck, as just child support, as just monetary value um, for both the mother, the child, and for the system to get back whatever money gets lost because the mom is on welfare, or food stamps, or what have you. So when you have a situation where you're considering no longer dealing with the mother of your child, whether you guys are in a relationship, live together, married, or just co-parenting. It sucks, but part of being in that adult situation for the benefit of your child, you kind of have to go out of your way to maintain some semblance of a cordial, amicable relationship. Because if you're dealing with anything less than a grown, mature, classy woman who understands the importance of a connection and a bond between a father and their child, you're dealing with anything less than that and the woman that you have a child with, then you're in for a long, fucked up road. Because it's still true that all a woman has to do is go to court and say that you are anything less of a father, that you are a danger to her, or that she's afraid of you, or that she feels you're a danger to your child, regardless if there's any truth to that situation, the court, nine times out of ten, is automatically going to side with that woman, and until you're able to prove otherwise, they're going to side with that, with that woman, that mother. And we don't get the same benefit of the doubt, man. Unfortunately, we don't. Um, there's a co-worker of mine I got a story for y'all There's a co-worker of mine Going through a situation Who You know Somehow, some way Either has evidence of Or Gain knowledge of the, the possibility that The mother of his child Is abusing their child I don't know what that abuse looks like I don't know what it, you know, what it entails I just know that that's what my co-worker is dealing with and requested an emergency court hearing to try and uh, regain custody, physical custody over the mom. So he petitioned to the court to have the child removed and put into his care while this matter could be resolved, investigated, what have you. And no surprise, no surprise at all, the court did not grant uh, that petition, the court did not find in his favor. And mind you, you know, it's hard to prove abuse 
and a lot of times it takes a lot in a long process and different things to show a pattern of abuse the only problem I have is it's so much easier for a woman for a mother to accuse a father of abuse and have that father be blackballed in the in the family court without it with, with little to no proof just okay on a strength of and just in case this is true let's make sure there's supervised visits and let's make sure the father doesn't get to have the child alone and let's suspend visitation and all these different things just because the mother said it but when it's the other way around because the court is holding to the belief that a child is always in the better care nine times out of ten always in a better situation in the care of the mother as far as physical custody goes it's an uphill battle for any halfway de- even any halfway decent father to paint themselves in a light that the court can perceive as that father being deserving of something that is supposed to be their birthright which is their right to their child it's fucked up I don't like the fact that I have to talk about it so often on this platform, but I do. Um, and it always seems like there's something that is out there on social media, posted a story, a situation, a meme, uh, an idea, a fucking quote or philosophy, and it always seems to remind me of somehow, some way, some shape or form uh, of that dynamic. Um, so I just stopped through to give, you know, just a cautionary tale, a cautionary piece of advice for all my men, my fellow fathers out there, take it from one father to another, I have always and will always, no matter what the situation is, even if it's not my fault, if there's ever a breakdown in my situation, I will always, always err on the side of, you know, I know they say it's cheaper to keep her, and that's true, you know, on its own, in its own environment, in its own situation, in its own context. But in the context of me being a father who puts my children above any and everything in the world, period, because they are my number one and only, at the end of the day, responsibility and life and um, obligation, because I know I'm that kind of father, I will always err on the side of staying, even if in a less than ideal situation, meaning I might not be 100% happy or okay in my situation if that was the case I would still err on the side of you know what I'm, I'm here for my kids because at the end of the day it's just like I go back to saying you know about family that you're born into you can't control what family you're born into my children didn't ask to be here right my children did not choose me as their parent or their mother as their parent as their parent you know our actions led to our children being here so my actions led to my children my children being here then my children are always going to be my responsibility i'm always first last and only once everything else is stripped away obligated to my children first and last Um, And that's just the way it is. So I think if more parents took that approach, if more parents um, understood on the the very, you know, basic foundation that, look, we're obligated to our children no matter what. And if we approach parenting like that, despite what mistakes we're all going to make as parents, because it's not a perfect job, it's never going to be, there's no perfect parent. But I think that would eliminate a lot of issues from the root of any situation. Because a lot of the issues that we all have in our adult lives, a lot of the hang-ups and the personality flaws and the whatever quirks, idiosyncrasies, um, you know, beliefs and whatever moral compass we owe, the actions that we choose to take and not take, the calibration of that moral compass... We, those things can all be traced back to 
the beginning, our parents, our, you know, our upbringing, uh, the influences that were um, uh, exposed to us. And if we start there, and if we try to change the culture of how fucked up relationships are, not for us because it's fucked for us. You know, we grew up in a time when, you know, it's just, it's fucked for my generation. But we can do better with our children. And I think for the most part, a lot of my generation, people in my age group, you know, 35 down to 30 and up to 40, um, I think for the most part, we are trying to do better. And I think um, we're coming to that understanding that we're so fucked up in a lot of ways and have a hard time navigating through our adult relationships with each other that we understand we got to do better for our kids and I think I, I truly do think the tide is starting to change and there's going to be a better generation of kids that we're raising than you know what we were raised in and raised as and raised around and that's not even necessarily to the detriment of our parents and grandparents what have you it's you know you you're only beholden to and a prisoner of the knowledge and the access and the privilege and the information that you have at the time. You know, if, if, if our parents did the best they could in the early 80s, mid 80s, late 80s, you know, it's, it's what they had. It's what they it's what they knew. But we have so much more in the way of knowledge and, and, and access and power and information and technology. It's just so much more than we could do so. It's so much better that we should do. Um, so, yes, to sum it all up, you can cut anybody off you choose to at any given time. And no, you shouldn't be afraid to cut toxic people out of your life. However, understand this is for everybody. Part of being an adult, part of love, <laughs> navigating through the adult world and in and out of adult relationships and situations is understanding that cutting a person off is the easy way out of a situation. We may, we may not see it as easy because it's hard to sever ties and connections with people, especially those people we think we care about. But the easy part is cutting someone off. It's far more difficult through all the gripes and the complaining and the groaning and the, uh, the ill shit and the actions that people do to each other. That's what's difficult to maintain and to deal with and continue to... to transact and negotiate with that person knowing that there's a bigger issue at stake there's a bigger picture there to 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 be you know observed and to be uh navigated through and negotiated around um that's the hard part and i think as adults in the you know living in our adult lives that's something we need to learn to be better at because we ain't going to get along with everybody we're not going to get along with everybody. And sometimes the people that we get along the least with are the people that sleep next to us at night. The people that we call husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend. The people that we call, you know, sister, brother, mother, father, whatever. Um, people that we have kids with. Um, but to the extent that it is necessary in some way, shape, or form to the development of a child who is innocent and who had nothing to do with being born into that environment, toxic as it may or may not be. Um, we want to give our children the best possible um, head start in life. And look, that even applies to if you know 100% that part of the reason why you are the way you are it's because of the family you were born into and you want to avoid having your children around that as much as possible. That's necessary as well. Don't let family ties, don't let because somebody's a family member make you feel pressured to have them be a part of your child's life. Sometimes it's best for a motherfucker not to have nothing to do with your kids, family or not. And that just is what it is. And that's what I came through to talk to y'all about. You know, it's, it's it's cool to let these memes provide motivation, inspiration. You know, it's cool to get a laugh off of these memes and these posts and share and like and comment and yes it up and fist bump and praying hands and, you know, hand claps and all types of hearts and shit. 
when, you know, we, we post shit for each other and that each other likes. But at the end of the day, just be smart about what it is you're doing and who you're getting involved with. And more importantly, it's, well, as important as who you get involved with and who you choose not to get involved with is who you choose to cut off and who you choose to keep in your circle. And that's how I'm going to close my night off. Again, make sure that um, you all do something every day to further your goals and your dreams. Um, do a little bit every day because it's not about the big things you do. It's about the little steps you take day in and day out. I don't pretend to know everything. I just know what I know. Like, comment, and subscribe. And remember, I'm my biggest fan. You should be yours. Peace and love, and I'll see you on the next one.